So last but certainly not least, my friend Peter Brown, who I, well, I was just thinking, I, I met on the day that Houston Tomorrow was born, was conceived of at a park thing that we did in 1998. And, uh, and since then we've done a lot of work together. He's been on our board almost the whole time. And uh, I've never resigned. Never resigned, never shows up. You didn't mention that you're <laughs> I did say you have right there, Peter okay, Brown. Okay. <laughs> and, and so that's how we work together, pretty much, Peter and I do. But, but, we, but still, a lot getting done because of Peter Brown, and we're all grateful. So there you go, Peter. Thanks. Well, <clears throat> I, I must say, this is uh, certainly a conversation that needs to be had, and I'm very uh, excited about what people are saying. Uh, James Callaway, you got me all fired up. But let me tell you one thing. This is a problem we have in Houston. I got inspired by Bloomberg's Pianos in the Parks. And so I offered personally to donate two pianos to Discovery Green. I thought that'd be a great idea. You know, people just randomly coming up. And uh, the board of Discovery Green ultimately uh, rejected my offer because they said there was uh, insurance problems or some bureaucratic reason like that. And that's the kind of thing that keeps us from moving forward that keeps us from having progress. So I think I've found another park, maybe Old Market Square, where I can donate some pianos. But Callaway, I want your help on this. You I want it. your help. <laughs> All right, I just got back from a month in Europe. A month in Europe, uh, I'm sort of jet lagged, but I want to tell you what I did is, by being in Europe, I substantially lowered my personal carbon footprint <laughs> by about 10%. So instead of, uh, 20 tons, that's what mine is, and you know you can go online and look your carbon footprint up, just google carbonfootprint.com, and, and you'll be shocked, you got to fill in some information. Uh, I'm down to eight, probably 18 tons now, which is, which I'm really ashamed of. Did you know that the average uh, carbon footprint in London per capita is about six tons, six tons, mine personally is 20 tons. And I think this carbon footprint of what I'm hearing from everybody is a good measurement of the progress we're making or not making. And uh, uh, the average European city, I think in Amsterdam, it's really way down there, about five tons. And uh, I'm not sure what it is in uh, Houston. In fact, uh, there was a, a, a lecture at Rice about this, and he had a chart about the carbon footprint of, of American cities. And I raised my hand and said, where's Houston? And he said, well, I, the, the, there wasn't room in the slide to put Houston on there because it was way off the charts. So I'm telling you, folks, we've got a serious problem of our carbon emissions here in Houston. And you've heard today the many reasons why we have that. Now, I want to compliment Allison. Allison. Taylor. Okay. You're the only one, only one today who said the word sprawl. You're the only one. And, and sprawl is an enormous challenge for the city, the city and region of Houston. And it's one of the reasons we have this, this enormous carbon footprint. But nobody's willing to talk about it. Well, Callaway talked about it. But, uh, okay, people are willing to talk about it, but they're not willing to do anything about it. Part of the reason for this is, part of the reason, we don't have any planning in Houston. We simply don't have any planning. We don't have any clear public policies. And if you want to do something about all these issues that we've been talking about today, you've got to have some kind of a plan, adopted plan, some uh, guiding principles that everybody subscribes to, or most everybody, uh, that, that, lead this, that, that create the foundation that's going to lead the city forward. We, we operate, and, and I learned this on the city council so well, we're, we're an ad hoc policy city and region. We operate uh, reactively on an ad hoc basis and it's not getting us anywhere it's not getting us anywhere anywhere the other issue if I slur a few words is because I'm jet lagged the other issue is this this uh, frightening I would call it frightening disconnect between the city of Houston and Harris County and the region they're not cooperating they're not collaborating that's worse than what's in Austin Callaway because uh, the, 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 the county and the suburbs are driving one policy and there's a tremendous imbalance 
on the Houston Galveston Area Council in terms of the influence of what's outside of the city in the central city. And th this is a distinction that we need to make, uh, uh, the distinction between the central city, because this innovation, this creative uh, uh, interaction that Michael Emerson is talking about, it's not happening out in Sugarland. It's not happening in uh, uh, League City. It's happening in the central city. So we have to make the distinction between the central city and uh, the region that it, uh, it serves. And we're not doing that here in Houston. I remember Bill White used to say on city council, you know, I'm mayor of the fastest growing city in America. And then afterwards I'd say, Bill, the city of Houston is hardly growing. It's the region that's growing. And if you look at the 2010 census, 92% uh, of the growth and almost that much of the jobs We've got job sprawl, folks. We've got job sprawl. I read about Conoco Phillips out in uh, uh, West uh, Houston today. We've got not only population sprawl, we've got job sprawl. And that, when you've got job sprawl and population sprawl, and the uh, Siemens people or anybody can tell you, you're really driving your carbon footprint up and you're creating it. Uh, it's sort of a, uh, what I like to call a sprawl. Ponzi scheme where the, where the developer, the land developer, and the builders, they, they skim all the money off the top, people move out there, and then who's going to build the, the, the infrastructure system to serve all that sprawl? Then the problem comes. So it's a, it's a kind of a Ponzi scheme that we are inadvertently uh, supporting uh, in, in the Houston region. Now, if you look at population density, it's really scary, really scary. The, 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 the low density of this uh, region is part of this, uh, I don't know, Michael, maybe you can think of a better term. I like Ponzi, or uh, Sprawl Ponzi scheme, because that's what it is, but nobody here is recognizing it. Nobody's talking about it. When I say nobody, it's the leadership of the city. And uh, I'll just say this as a, a, a former, uh, a politician, if you want to call me that, uh, the, the, the leadership in this city or the, 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 the power brokers in this city are really oriented toward uh, facilitating uh, suburban sprawl. And there's probably, if you have a good idea about sustainability, there's probably 10 power brokers, and I could give you their names. And if, if the green building is, uh, that, that's acceptable. But if it's anything that threatens suburban development, these 10 people could kill it right away because they are the people who control the contributions, they get the politicians elected, and the, and the elected politicians are one way or another, and mostly in a fairly benign and nice way, they're beholden to these 10 power brokers. And that's not working in this city. It's not working, and most of those power brokers are suburban oriented and supporting uh, all these enormous profits that come out of suburban land development. So, you know, we need, if you want change, the issue here is political will. We got all the good ideas you can think about. But if we can't translate that into action, who, who was the one that said you need an action plan? Was that you, Allison? Action plan. We'll give Siemens some more credit. Uh, we'll give Chad Nobles from Siemens. He's the contact guy. If you want to, uh, uh, complain to Siemens about anything, raise your hand, he's right there. Uh, don't, Allison, don't, don't complain to her, uh, complain to Chad. Uh, we, we've got to change the, the political equation in this city. It's politics, folks. It's politics, m contributions to pol politicians. That's what's running this city. And, and, and that's what's causing this, this uh, I think, disconnect and fragmentation. You know, where are the neighborhoods in all this? Where's neighborhood power? These are the people that vote. They, they're not even at the table, folks. I can tell you that. I can tell you that right now. So uh, we need to start talking about uh, how we affect uh, uh, political change in this city. Uh, I think uh, you started, uh, Callaway started to talk about it, but then he, he blamed it on the Texas legislature. I think we've got a lot of work to do at home to build a, a, a coalition around a shared vision for the future of this city. We have to have a strong central city. That's, that's what we need in order to have a strong region. And there's an imbalance right now. I can't emphasize that enough. There's an imbalance between 
growth and job sprawl outside of the city and what's happening in the city. Uh, Better Houston did, and I'll stop with this, Better Houston did an analysis based on the 19, uh, uh, sorry, the 2010 census uh, about uh, the city tax base. And this should be something that we are, we are very, very concerned about. We have a very weak tax base in the city, and we don't have the public policies and programs in place coming out of the mayor's office or wherever it is. I can't, I'm not following the current mayor, but this has been historic that's going to build the, the city tax base. About 65% of the land area of the city of Houston uh, is unproductive in terms of sales taxes and property taxes. In other words, it costs more to service those areas, it costs the city more to service those areas than the, the property and sales taxes received. And what this means is you've got a small, it's mostly on the west side, but you mentioned River Oaks, the throw in Tanglewood, and a lot of those other places uh, that where property values are high uh, that are supporting the other 65% uh, of the city. And that, that's, and we, the, the city of Houston has some of the highest taxes of any uh, uh, urban city in America. People don't realize that. You can look it up. It's, we're, we're a very high tax city. And, um, you know, there are just so many of these facts. Someone said, well, you've got to get the facts. We've got to get the facts out of where we stand in terms of the city itself and how it's going to survive as this engine of innovation, right? An engine of it. Because if it's going that way, not that way, it's not going to be an engine of innovation. So uh, I just think there's a, a lot of uh, courageous uh, t discussion. Uh, collaboration and action that's needed uh, to reverse a number of tr trends that are happening in this city uh, that, that desperately need to be reversed. And we, look, we've got a we're, we're a great city. We've got great assets. You know, whether it's the port or the medical center or this uh, the 150,000 jobs we have downtown. I mean, we've got a lot to brag about, a lot to do this about. But I'll I'll just end with this. I used to go to these uh, political. Uh, fundraisers, let's take uh, Robert Eccles, I remember one he went to, and they had, he spoke, and a couple other people spoke, and I was sitting at a table and I said, you know, I think I'm going to resign from city council. There's no reason for me to be on city council, because we live in a utopia, folks. It's a utopia. You heard them say that. So uh, we don't live in a utopia. We can always be better, and I think we need to work collaboratively together, and thank uh, better use uh, uh, Houston tomorrow uh, for doing this but let's not just leave it here folks let's get out and take some action and talk to people I'm going to talk to Callaway I'm going to talk to Michael Nichols who are you had an interesting conversation with him a couple of other you folks and uh, l let's get an action program going thank you thank you all thank the other speakers uh,